Thank you for joining us today. We're here to present our Boulder Primary Project Renovation Plans. I'm Alana Biondo from Valley High School. I'm Christina Brown from RJ Agassi High School. I'm Dick Blood, and I go to Rancho High School right here in Las Vegas. My name is Christian Bombard, and I attend Shadow Ridge High School of Las Vegas. My name is Diego Flores. I come from the Las Vegas Academy of the Arts, and I come from Salina. So, as we said, so as you heard from the other groups, we're all working on ideas to build a highway, but I think you guys should know our team name first because y'all will be voting for us later. <laughs> <laughs> we call ourselves the Roadway Renovators because we want Boulder Highway to be brought back to what it used to be. On our t-shirts, as you can see, we have two R's, Roadway Renovators, and we did our shirts a little differently from everyone else. Instead of using paintbrushes, we used our hands to cover the shirts. So as you can see on some of the shirts, it's a little more visible than the others, in that sense, because that symbolizes all the hard work that'll have to go into changing Boulder Highway. I would like to um, hand it over to Christina, who will be doing the introduction. So here's the introduction to Boulder Highway. Boulder Highway is 17.2 miles, and it starts from Fremont Street and it goes into Boulder Highway. Boulder Highway has multiple jurisdictions. The jurisdictions are the city of Henderson, the city of Las Vegas, and Clark County. Okay, so. Okay, so I'm gonna show you the map right here. This is current, this is the current Florida Highway. Okay, so this, the map is from Boulder Highway to Desert Canyon Land. And as you see, the map is color coordinated because as you see, there's a lot of, there's a lot of homes and places to go. And as you see, the crosswalks are very distant from each other. And where the crosswalks are is where people have to cross. But where they want to go is far away from the crosswalk. So people end up, people tend to cross in between the medians. So most of the times they either end up getting hit by a speeding car because they just want to make a quick way to the store or wherever they want to go. So I'm going to pass it over to my partner, Christian. Thank you, Christina. Now that you know the basics of Boulder Highway, you'll now learn about its seemingly endless problems. Over the last five years, over 1,700 crashes have occurred on Boulder Highway. As a result, over 30 pedestrians have lost their lives. These deaths account for about 8% of the total deaths in all of Clark County. This has made Boulder Highway the most dangerous road in all of the Las Vegas Valley and has also given it the title of the 13th most dangerous world in the, in the entire United States. In fact, on the second day of this Summer Institute, a pedestrian was struck and killed on Boulder Highway. This could have been prevented just as all other collisions could have been but they were caused by a variety of issues. These issues include a 45 mile per hour speed limit, too many lanes, very wide lanes, as well as very, very poor lighting. In fact, many portions of the road don't have any lighting at all. Faded crosswalks, very low curbs and sidewalks, a lack of a complete lack of sidewalks in many areas, bus stops being located very far from crosswalks, which encourages illegal crossing, and finally, a complete lack of any protection for pedestrians and cyclists. 
Fortunately, the rover innovators have proposed a number of solutions to combat these issues. And once these solutions are in place, Bullet Highway will be a safe haven for all travelers who use it despite mode of transportation. Now I'll be hand handing it over to Alana to talk to you guys about the history of Bullet Highway. Boulder Highway didn't always used to be so dangerous. The road was originally built in uh, 1931. It was um, intended for the access of the Hoover Dam. So lots of workers, 21,000 workers worked on the Hoover Dam. They would all live in Las Vegas and Boulder City, and they would take Boulder Highway to get to the dam. Um, the photos up here, the first one at the top, is a picture of Boulder Highway getting built. It's from 1931. This is when is when this photo was taken. Here you have the mules flattening the road. This one is another photo of Boulder Highway pointing in the southeast direction near the vicinity of um, the current East Las Vegas. I got both of these photos. I found them in the UNLV Digital Library. I think they're very cool because they see the history. <laughs> so this photo is from 1945, just after the end of World War II. As you can see, the town's grown a bit. Many people came to Las Vegas with the building of the Hoover Dam because it was built during the Great Depression, so lots of people were looking for jobs. But as you can see, it's not as big as it is today. Over here is Fremont Street, and it transitions into Boulder Highway, and this is Charleston Boulevard. Now these intersections are really busy. <laughs> yeah. But as the city grew, people wanted different things. They didn't want to be in the center of the city anymore. So the suburbanization happened and people moved out to the suburbs. And then urban sprawl, which is resident communities, very separate from commercial areas. And it has wide, it has a huge dependency on cars. So as you can see, this is a zoning map from the city of Henderson. And the purple is Boulder Highway, and it's for corridor use. All the yellow is low density housing. So these would be like your residential areas. The blue is reserved for industrial. So these are industrial parks and just industrial places in general. And the green is semi-public and public land use. So these could be stores and um, small businesses. As you can see, there is a wide separation between all the houses and all the businesses. And this is an example of urban sprawl. So everyone needs to take cars to get somewhere. I would like to hand it off to Diego and he'll be talking about our plans to improve Boulder Highway. Thank you, Alana. So, the future of Boulder Highway. We would really like to um, have a wow factor into it and we would like to add the light rail. We saw um, the success in, in Phoenix, Arizona, connecting to a town called Tempe. And we would like to connect it to um, Boulder City, to downtown Las Vegas. It will also reduce um, cars on the road for efficient transportation. And we would like to bring businesses back to Boulder Highway. And it will also safely and quickly move more people. We would also like some road reduction. We would like to lower the speeds from 45 miles per hour to 30 miles per hour. We would need some narrow roads because it generally decrease, um, makes cars decrease their speed. Plus, Boulder Highway needs to go on a road diet. <laughs> it has to go from six lanes to four lanes, two lanes on each side. Some features have to be added to this road. We need wider sidewalks for protection for all the pedestrians. We need isolated bike, bike lanes because we saw the success in, um, in Europe, in England, that the bike lanes are next to the sidewalk instead of around, I mean, no, right next to the road because it's more dangerous if it's on the road and in the sidewalk, in its eyes. We also need um, 
bus, Ripley bus stop, um, cyclists will have to yield to pedestrians for good flow for people that um, people uh, that are coming from the sidewalk into the bus shelter. And we also need drainage offsets. And it is very successful. As you can see here on our model, right here, there's a Danish offset right here next to the bus stop. And it's going into a, a light rail station. And then it comes to the other side, which right there next to it is another bus stop. And now I'm going to be passing the microphone over to Victor. Thank you, Diego. So, one of the biggest problems that we have on Boulder Highway is we have drunk drivers hitting bus shelters. In order to combat this, we plan on moving bus shelters behind a protected barrier in order to stop cars from hitting them. This will also help protect the buses while they're loading passengers because they'll have to go into their own protected lane in order to pick them up. We also have a problem with people illegally crossing the street. Now, what we plan to do is that we plan to move more crosswalks next to the bus stop and light rail station so that people trying to get to the public transportation don't have to walk a long distance out of their way just to get to where they want to go. And finally, we also have, we want to add lights because poor lighting does not, does not only create fatalities on Boulder Highway, it also creates an uninviting road to walk on at night. So what we plan to do is that we have LED ground lights on the sidewalk and on the crosswalk to increase pedestrian visibility. This will allow cars to see pedestrians as they walk, and will also allow the pedestrians to see their surroundings while walking at night. And that brings me to beautification. So beautification is one thing that is very much overlooked when trying to revitalize the road. And what we, plan to, well, what we want to happen is that we want to have uh, more businesses on Boulder Highway utilize, adopt the highway, to make sure that the roads are clean and maintained. And with this, all the funds given will go to the maintenance of the road through adopt the highway. And with and with a cleaner road, pedestrians walking will be more likely to shop on places there because they'll be greeted with a clean and safe environment. Now I'd like to pass it over to Alana. So this concludes our presentation. You've heard the problems, the history, and the solutions of Boulder Highway, as well as you've viewed a map. But all of this could be been done without our resources. So here are our citations for the websites we use to gather the information, and here are our citations for the images. Although all the last images you saw planning the highway were directly for the model, so that the people in the back could also see what we were talking about. Any questions? So am I correct in the interpretation that you'll, um, you're still proposing a bus line as well as the light rail line? And if so, can you speak to the need for both? Um, not necessarily a bike, uh, bus designated lane, but we were thinking more along the lines of a 
little pull out stations for the buses. And that way they can take as much or as little time as they need to get the people without hindering the flow of traffic. And then when they're done, they'll just pull back out and join the rest of the road. Both of them are really important, but they have different purposes. For bus stations, the stops would be a little bit shorter, and the monorails or the light rail stations would get you a little to farther places. But we do want to try to correlate the monorail and the bus stops, because you could go a short distance on a bus stop and then end up in a monorail station and get right on and get to wherever you need to go faster than a bus might be. The stretch of Boulder Highway is 17.2 miles, so we didn't go through and count them all. So I don't know that number quite exactly, but that is a very good question. Although most of the crosswalks are only at intersections between two roads, and we believe that they should put more crosswalks where places of interest for people going from residential to commercial areas. Thank you all for watching our presentation.